Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance Hello everybody, welcome to Long Bangers I'm Matty Hello, I'm Colin I'm John And uh, I'm delighted to say we're also joined uh, tonight by Christian Deutsch Christian, how are you? Very good, thank you Thanks for having me on, lads No worries um, I would really appreciate you taking a bit of time out on a, a Wednesday night to, uh, to record this with us um, I, I suppose like, just to kind of get the ball rolling with a, a nice sort of easy question just to set the scene. So, Christian, who, who do you think is to blame for this situation in Palestine at the minute? Oh, my God. I was, <laughs> I, I was just watching that upstairs and I was like, <laughs> to my missus, I have no idea what's going on. I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. Uh, the, the real first question was, uh, <laughs> it's International Week. How, how are you enjoying the, the, the week? Has it been a week off or have you been in training? It certainly hasn't been a week off. Um, I don't think the gaffer believes in them. Um, to be fair, he's only just come in, isn't he? So he's uh, he's still trying to, you know, put us to work and uh, work on things that he, he thinks we can get better at. Um, we had, um, I think we had two days off, three days off, um, but we've been in non-stop since then. Um, mm. We've got a little bounce game against uh, Livingston. Uh, which was good to get some minutes in the legs for a lot of lads who haven't played too much, but it's been it's been good and it's been it's been tough too. And uh, how have you found it under uh, the new manager since he's come in? No, I'm really enjoying it. He's seems like a, a really nice a, a nice man. Um, you know, like good morals, and you know he he knows exactly how he wants to play. And what what I like most about him is um, he knows exactly what he wants to do at the start of the week um, in terms of how we're going to play against the opponent on the weekend. Um, so we work on things each day to try and get us the three points at the end of the week, uh, which is good. But his sessions are very intense, very hard. Um, but I think you'll see a lot fitter Hibs team going forward uh, just because of the workload we've we've been doing. You I mean, said that... Um... Oh, sorry, Mike. Uh, I was going to say... You mentioned there about uh, not having a week off and uh, things that the manager thinks that the team could improve on. Has he pulled you aside for a conversation, talked about things that you could improve on? And if if so, what are they? Um, yeah, well, you you obviously have these private chats with the manager quite often, and, and he's big for that. And he he you could you'll see him around the changing room or the training ground, sorry, just uh, pulling lads for chats all the time. And you know, I think he wants to know people on a personal level, just not football. Um, he likes to know everything about your families and stuff like that, which is, which is good. And yeah, you know, I've, I've obviously spoken to him, and you know, it's, I think it's, it's just trying to put a lot of belief in me, to be honest, and, and try and be the best player I can be for Hibs. Um, you know, we we're obviously working on certain things in training, and you know, just things to get better at, really. Talking about you know, uh, being a, a better player for uh, for Hibs, you're sort of enjoying a wee bit of a rejuvenation. Uh, it has it looked at one point, Christian, that you might have been on on the way out? Uh, yeah. How's it? How's it been this season for you? Because it, it's been like almost a complete turnaround. Yeah, no, it's been good. Um, obviously, come back pre-season, and I think um, everyone was quite surprised to see me. Um, but you know, I was, I've got a lot of close friends at Hibs, and you know, I spoke to them over the summer, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to come home, uh, come back, and you know, and and really work hard, and and, and try and change their opinions on me, you know. <laughs> Um, obviously the old manager was in and you know it was touch and go for a long time whether I'd be still staying <laughs> even after a few games um, very close to, to leaving but you know it was my decision to stay um, I wanted to just remain at Hibs you know I love playing for this football club and you know um, if I was to leave I've just, I probably wouldn't have played for a club the size of Hibs uh, again in my career and you know I've been here a long time now and I've really enjoyed it and I'm not sure I want it to end yet. That's good to hear. What about um, when when you first came to the club then, if we rewind back to then, how did that move come about? Um, Graham Maffey, um, I was at Forest Green at the time and I got a move to the Championship in Bolton. I don't know if any of you have heard about that, but the, the club went into like administration. So it was like a loan to permanent. And um, basically, it got to January the 1st, where they were supposed to play my first instalment of my fee. And um, the manager, Phil Parkinson, at the time, basically said, 
Doji, you're not insured the train with us. Um, we haven't paid the fee. Uh, none of the lads have been paid. You're going to have to go back to Forest Green. So I've gone back to League Two there. Um, obviously, it was gutted because you get the championship move. You're, you're buzzing, you know, fi- not just financially, but like I never dreamt of playing in the championship considering where I come from. So it was like a massive opportunity for me. And um, that just went peak tong. And then that summer, um, Graham Maffey called me and I was just eager to, to go out and try something try something new because I knew that I'd end up play, staying at Forest Green probably for, for a long, long time. And, you know, um, I was comfortable there and I wanted a new challenge. So um come up to Edinburgh and, and, and met Graham and, and absolutely loved it. Did... Graham Maffey just kind of phone you out of the blue, or or how did he become aware of your availability? Well, he, he, to be honest, he was um, he's quite needy actually. He, um, <laughs> I've uh, I was speaking to to him um, probably the summer before um, I actually joined, and um, it just wasn't right for me at that time. But um, he didn't he didn't directly speak to me. He spoke to my agent, um, and we just um, felt like it was the the best thing for me to do at that time in my career and you know I'm so glad I've done it. Did you have any so there's a perception down south about how the Scottish games like you know my granny could score in that league and all that kind of stuff did did you have that thought about it you know like before you came up or did you think it was going to be easy or you know what was your what was your sort of mindset when you had Yeah well you speak to other teammates and stuff and I was like oh I'm looking to go up to Scotland and they were like what, why are you doing that if you if you don't do well like you'll struggle to get a team back up back here and and stuff like that and you obviously see a lot of stories about strikers coming to Hibs and probably it not working out and you know they've had to go back down south um but I'm so um glad that I made the decision it was it was certainly hard because it was um a big call you know moving up to Edinburgh on my own um you know setting up base I was a great football club in Forest Green where you know I was scoring goals every week and almost like the main man and then going up to Hibs where um relatively I was a nobody and I, I had to try and um make my way into the team and, and start scoring goals and you know I know that's going to be the next question that it took me a, a little while to get up and running but um you know it's so hard. It's a lot harder up here than what people give it credit for. It's funny you mentioned that about that next question because this is one that I'd kept uh, up my sleeve. I was up at our broth in a pre-season friendly where you had a penalty to kind of make your mark yeah. in a hip shot. Talk us through that. Well, you know, you know how it is. You just think, right? I'm, I'm new to the club, right? Yeah, I'm going to take the pen. Like, I'm, I need to get up and running. Um, and obviously. Probably a way too casual. Probably trying to act like I wasn't nervous or whatever, and just completely fluff my lines. But you know, like I speak to Joe about this all the time. Like in in England, you get a longer break, and you don't go into competitive games for for a good while into pre season. And I remember we were playing like the Betfred Cup games after like two weeks of being in, and me and Joe are like, Jesus Christ, we've just come off holiday for three weeks. Like you know, and we both signed that summer and didn't know we were going to be coming to Hib. So. You know, it all come very quickly and uh, then you're just thrown into competitive games, probably not fit at all because you've been off for six, seven weeks from playing in England. So um, that was a big learning curve um, going up to our growth. Uh, did you think like, when you were sort of like in that first, you know, however many games it was where you were struggling for goals, were you thinking, oh, fuck's sake, what have I done? Or did you know it was going to come good? Yeah, I I knew it was going to come good. Um Obviously, it was some tough times, you know, like getting all kinds of abuse. But and, you know, it's like it was like the biggest Hibs are like probably up with Bolton like, in terms of like size of club. And I wasn't used to it, really. You know, um, at Forest Green, you get 2000 fans and, you know, they're all from the Cotswold. And regardless of you win or lose, you're getting a a clap off. And, you know, it was it was it was hard to adjust, definitely. Um, but, you know, I've. Even when I was at Carmarthen Town in the Welsh Premier League, I remember having a real slow start and then kind of caught fire a little bit. But so I just kept believing. I kept remembering what I've done in beforehand, and you know, just kept sticking to it really. And then obviously got had the game against St Johnston. What was uh, Heckenbottom like at that time? So obviously he'd, he'd signed you, and it was a difficult time for him as well because the team were struggling for uh, for form out. 
I, I, I remember uh, we had Marvin Bartley on, and he couldn't speak highly enough at uh, heck and bottom. But how, how was he with you during that period? Oh, he was great, like re really good. And there's there's no surprise that he's um, up at Sheffield United now in the in the Premier League. Um, really, really good. And I think if the, the thing about Paul was that if you ask any staff member about him, they they would like say how how good he was. You know, he was great around the place. And I felt a bit sorry for him to be honest. Like he was out without Ryan Porteous. He was without Martin Boyle. They're two massive players for us. Mm. Massive players for us. And um, you know, it's just one of those things where when when the team's struggling, um, sometimes it's really hard to get out of that little that little rut that you're in. And um, you know, he he worked as he worked as hard as he possibly could and you know, we we just couldn't get the results for him in the end. And it was that St. Johnson game that, that after they'd left with, with, I think Eddie May was in charge and you got the hat trick. And I'm sure that's where the phrase, that fucking Deutsch guy got uh, yeah. coined. <laughs> when, when, you, when you heard that, did you know it was some guy off the internet or did you think that might have been Paul Heckenbottom that said it? Uh, <laughs> well, Robbie Stockdale actually texted me after that game being like, bloody hell, that's a week too blooming, um, too late. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, of course I wanted to score loads of goals from, especially after them like bringing me in and stuff. Um, a shame it didn't work out, but <clears throat> both are both are doing well now. Was there any particular change? So, like in the previous weeks before that, where you were struggling to score, and then you scored a hat trick against St Johnston. Was there any was there any big change from you? Did you think about doing anything differently that led to those three goals? Well, I completely fluffed my lines on the first one. If you remember, it was cambiri has gone on a little mazy, and he's cut it back to me and I've like scuffed it to the keeper. And then I think as soon as I got that one there, I was off. You know, I think it's just probably a confidence thing, to be honest. Is that a thing that's been through your career? Because you've been quite streaky at, at Hibs, I suppose. Was it like that before you came as well? Yeah, yeah. Well, even when I was at um, Forest Green, like a slow start there. And then as soon as you got the one, seemed to go on a run. Um, obviously, I can't really help it. Like, uh, it's just no. a, a, my... my throughout my career you know um I think it's just the belief you have when you've you scored a goal and you're going into the next game or um you scored one in a game you just think when the next chance comes it's, it's going to go in and what about you said there about fluffing your lines at St Johnston I think you've got a little bit of a reputation at Hibs for scoring fluky goals or you know things just sort of like <laughs> glancing and off you and ended up in the back of the net has that been a characteristic throughout your career as well yeah I've yeah I've done that forever really um just it's not a fluke if you'd keep doing it then is it no exactly. you, just put, <laughs> you just got to put your body in the right positions you know <laughs> um no nah, yeah i've definitely i've not known for my incredible strikes really um i don't think i've scored many from outside the box maybe like two in my career i think the keeper could have probably got that one you <laughs> He came to Kilmarnock. He wanted to use it Kilmarnock when I was there, and um, I used to wind him up about that one because that one gave us third place, didn't it? So yeah, yeah, um, that was a good moment. Um, and uh, so you you kind of get up off the mark, up and running. Um, I think around about the same time that Joe Newell sort of settled. It was there a point where the two you thought actually this isn't as bad as we we thought it was. Ah uh, well, I, th I think we both we fell in love with it. Like fell in love with the club straight away, but we we knew how tough it was and we knew that we had to like try and turn it around a little bit. Um, but I think a little bit of time, you know, a lot of, just getting that experience of playing um, all the time for, for the club. Um, Joe had played at probably a higher standard than I had before. So it, he probably adjust, adjusted to it a little bit quicker than I did. But, um, you know, I think we, we ended up turning around that season a little bit and, um, you know, I think COVID struck and, stopped us from getting into the top six, but we were well on track after a very disappointing start to the season. I think it stopped you again. How many goals did you have when COVID hit? Because I'm sure my brother-in-law had a bet with somebody you were going to get 20. Oh, maybe stopped, maybe stopped in 15, maybe? 15, 16, yeah. Because I remember uh -huh. thinking, oh, I, I can get up to 20, yeah. And that that's great for your first season for Hibs. Mm -hmm. um, so I was up like, but I just felt like I was going to score every time I touched the ball. Even if I didn't even know it was gonna, if even if I didn't mean it, I don't think he's been ever paid out. I think uh, he, he, he tried to say, well, like he would have got twenty, mm. but like, you've got to just guess, just guess like what they've done with the season. 
Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I think I would have, but um, we definitely would have gotten the top six. That's for sure. I think we were, we were sitting six, weren't we? When the league, yeah. when the league finished, we were sitting six, and then they calculated on the points per game, and we dropped down to. That's it. Yeah, the, the, Johnston were playing like uh, Rangers. Rangers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. yeah. For some reason they went into sixth, and we went into seventh. So we we were literally the only team that was actually disadvantaged in that, that yeah. season. I know that like, like Hearts moan about it because they got relegated, but yeah. they were bought them anyway. They were going down. It was it was only, only us that actually dropped a place. Uh, um, what what was it like? So the next season with like playing under the COVID conditions, what was that like? Um, so much different. Like so so, so hard at the start. Um, you know, just the games were just really slow, lethargic. Like obviously no mm. atmosphere. So I feel like. For a while, it was hard for like both teams to get going. You know, it almost felt, felt like a bounce game at HTC, for example. Um, but you just got used to it, really. Um, you know, it was amazing for like Josh Doig, for example, who never played uh, um, first team football before, and then we've just thrown him in, and you know, he hadn't had the pressure of the fans and stuff like that, and he was able to have a, a great season. Um, so it, it was it was alright, and we we had a great year, didn't we? We 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 got third. We obviously got to the Scotch Cup final, um, and you know we we were playing really well. Like one of my most enjoyable times, I'd say. You know that the squad was really good. Um, loved the manager and, and his assistant. Yeah, they were. It was just a great play, time to play for Hibs. Just a shame that the fans couldn't see such a great season. I I think that impact. We've mentioned that a few times on here. I think because it was a bit negative the next season because we lost a couple of games and and. A lot of it was like because we were sitting in the t- we were sitting doing this like straight after a game and watching it on the telly and that you know it's just not the same um, and I think we won a lot of games but because we weren't there it, it had, didn't have that uh, enough. We had a lot of like, last minute winners and stuff like that where it would have been mm-hmm. like the place yeah. would have yeah. rocked you know and you know like I was a bit gutted really because I scored a few like in the last few minutes of games and stuff and you know like those moments are what you live for where the whole place is like. Yeah, rocking, you know. So, obviously, sad about that, but um, and obviously not being able to take like the fans on the journey to the to the cup final because you know you don't mm. get to the cup final very often. See, see, in COVID, uh, uh, this might be a, a question I should not answer. There, but did they play like crowd noise through the speakers in the stadium, or was that just a thing I read about that some teams were doing? Did we do that Easter? Can't even because they had all those cardboard. I think they had all the yeah, cardboard yeah, fans on the, the thing. <laughs> my mates all chipped in, right, to get a cardboard cut out of my mate who was in Benidorm on a stag do, <laughs> and he had like a uh, swim cap on. He had his derby out like that, like with a pint in his hand. <laughs> Every time I was on the pitch and I'd look in the stand, I'd see my mate Joe, and I just burst into laughter. <laughs> We have attempted to sort of wave up to them as if they, you know as if they were actually there. <laughs> yeah, all right, pal. <laughs> I've actually that's in my mate's um my mate's garage at home. He's got a little sports bar, and they've just got, got the the cutout of Joe on the wall next to my hip strip. <laughs> <laughs> what was um? What, so you mentioned about like the the squad being good and, and uh, being really good with um the manager was Jack Ross at the, at the time. What what was it about uh, Jack's time there that that made it so good, Christian? I think um, the squad was very small, so it was like a really tight knit group. Um, and the way he managed is that everyone's together. You know, um, the coaching staff were like the doors are always open. Um, you know, Potsy as assistant manager was amazing. Um, I don't know if you've heard too much about him, but he's a really, really top man and top coach. And, you know, I don't know what it was. It just like, I think because it was COVID as well and you couldn't have a lot of people around HTC and it was literally just the lads and the coaching staff. And it was just, for some reason, we we won a lot of games and we won like, we didn't, the thing, <laughs> what helped us is that without having fans is the fact that we won 1-0 a lot. Mm-hmm. And like, we used to keep it tight and then just score and then, keep it tight again you know and I think um, if it was at Easter Road we'd probably get a bit of stick if um, we were defending the way we were or you know like not attacking as much as the fans would like and you know we just found a way of winning games like it wasn't always pretty but you know um, it was just about getting up the league table and there were obviously a couple of disappointments in that that season that we I'm trying to get my times right so obviously the Scottish Cup final 
um, was like probably the, the biggest one because we were we were quite big favourites for that. I suppose. What I, I, mean, I don't know how many cup finals you you played in over your career, Christian. But what what was the build up to that game like? Everything was good. Um, you know, I had total belief that we we'd get we we'd win the game. Um, it still hurts today, to be honest. Um, it's a real tough one, you know. I think if we won that one, we would have been one of the most successful hip sides. Um, so there was a lot. There was a lot on it. Um, they obviously had a great season. we winning the double, but you know, I, I feel like we lost it rather than they won it. If if you know what I mean, like it was, it was a tough one, and you know, to concede. Obviously, it was a sloppy goal, and you know, we couldn't. Like we didn't really create anything that day, especially second half, and. I don't know, just just one of those days you look back on now with just pure gutted, really. Did you put your finger on what went wrong? Um, I think we had an early chance in the game and we, we didn't capitalise on it. And then mm. um, we obviously conceded that goal at the back post. Um, and we conceded quite a similar goal to that against them in the league, I think. Mm. And, um, you know, so that was really annoying. But I don't know, like... Me, Nizzy, Boyley, we couldn't, just didn't, we didn't create anything to, to win the game. And, you know, we, you look back at it now, like, I, I haven't watched the game back. Um, but it's, obviously, everyone's just gutted about it and so disappointed. So it would be so nice to get the opportunity to, to go to the final again. They'd be better anyway with a crowd in. That, that was the shit year to win it. Good for the stats, good for the other medal, shit year to win it. Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but it still would have been nice. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but... that, uh, that that forward line that we had, was, you mentioned yourself there, uh, Nisbet and, and, and Boyle, I think you've got something like 50, 50 odd goals between you. <coughs> uh, it was good, it was really good. You know, Nizzy, top, top player. You know, he's gone down to the championship now and plays for Scotland. And Boyle, he's just on a different planet sometimes when he, when he, when he wants to. He's, he's fighting. So he's. Uh, Obviously, we're top top player. To be honest, we, we were defensively really sound that season as well. So, you know, give us, it give me Nizzy and Boyley um, the opportunity to go forward and, and try and create. create. Um, I think a lot of the time I was just like the batter and ram, and Nizzy and Boyley were the, the sexy players. But I didn't mind that. I, I, I think I, during, sorry, my, uh, I think during that season because of the number of goals that you scored, there seemed to be from our perspective some serious suggestions that you might get called up to the Welsh squad. Has there ever been any conversations? How, how close have you actually been to getting called up? Yeah, well, I, I, was, ex I was very, very close once. And um, obviously, the Hibs media team were working day and night to try and get me in the team, um, which was which was nice. I used to get a bit of stick for that from the lads, but I didn't. I didn't really care. Um, but yeah, I was, I was close once. Um, I was getting a WhatsApp message of some guy with a Welsh bucket hat on and I thought it was a wind up because everyone knew I wanted to play for Wales and um, so I was texting my agent saying like oh have you have you heard anything or whatever and he's like no 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 um, anyway he was like the secretary at Wales and he sent me a message asking for my passport details and stuff like that and that was the last I heard of anything and then we went out to Europe uh, to Europe to play um, in Croatia and um, I'd done my Achilles in training the day before the game. And I'm like, oh, you're joking. And then um, I can't remember who we were playing. We were playing someone at home after it. And I had a phone call off Rob Page, the manager. And I missed it because I was in uh, he, uh, the stadium. And anyway, I called him back. And he was just like, he was so good with me, to be honest. He was like, just want you to know you were like so close to getting in. Um, I want to just give you this call to give you motivation to get back fitter and stronger, blah, blah, blah. And I was, he didn't really need to do that and really appreciated it. Yeah, And is that the same Achilles injury that you had recently? You're not long back from, sorry, uh, not last season, but the season before? Yeah, that, that, that was the yeah. time. Yeah, that was the time. Um, that was because I, I remember the reason I'd done my Achilles really is because that summer I got COVID just before. So I turned up the pre-season the first day and the night before, I was like, am I just shitting myself or am I feeling horrendous here? Do you know, like you get those nerves because you're going to training and you know you're going to be running your ass off. 
So I just went into training and I had COVID. So I went home and I was just like absolutely knocked it out of me, like bed bound for like 10 days. So I missed like 10 days of pre-season. And then um, we went straight into the European campaign then. So I'd done no pre-season. And then Nizzy got injured against um, Motherwell. And I played against Ross County and I played 90 minutes. And I just remember thinking, something's not right here. Something's hurting. But they just put it down to me not having a full pre-season and being unfit. And then we went out to uh, um, Cyprus to play the game. and Not Cyprus, sorry. Um, Croatia and just done it. Um, just one of those things. How, how did you go about that, that period? Because that must be difficult if you got like a jury come off an illness. And, and I think it was reported that you had long COVID as well, Christian. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. What, what was that time like for you? I've just... I think one of the toughest parts was like knowing that I was so close to being in the Welsh setup, and you know, obviously everyone knows like Achilles injuries can be can be really, really bad. Um, mine wasn't horrendous, but it wasn't great. Um, but yeah, you know, it's tough. Like it was my first big injury in my career as well, um, so it was tough to come back from. And what the the hardest thing was coming back and seeing the team struggling. So I probably rushed back a bit too much and. Um, Probably hadn't put the work in on the on the training pitch because I was trying to rush back for I think it was the the heart, uh, the Rangers game at Hamden in the semi final when Boydie mm-hmm. scored the hat trick. So that was always my goal to get back for that game. Um, so I, I made the bench for that game, and you know we obviously won, so it was great. But I was nowhere near ready to to put a strip on for Hibs. Was it frustrating then? Because I, I think obviously the the impact of not being quite ready. Is it your, your form suffered and then yeah. you, you you know you probably kind of I don't feel like fell down the pecking order if you like is how, how'd you cope with that as a as a player? Just just shot myself in the foot really. Um I remember the team was, was struggling and, and the gaffer was Jack Ross at the time and you know I so much respect for him and just wanted to get out there and, and, and help him as much as I could and you know I probably didn't do that and um yeah it was it was it was really tough and you know so I've just been so stop start for such a long amount of time since then. Um, so it, now it's nice to be in a bit of a routine and you know feel part of being in the team and being a valuable part of the team because um, I haven't really had that feeling for a, for a while. How is your Achilles doing now? Because I think after I think when you went out on loan to Kilmarnock, I think there was maybe something like twenty seven appearances there, and there was maybe a little bit of concern around say like playing on the plastic pitch or whatever. Is it? Have you given yourself that time? Do you feel like you're back to full fitness? Well, so so the the year I done my Achilles, I come back, and then um, I think uh, Sean Maloney come in, and um, just trying to get back to fitness. And then Big Rocky smashed me in training, and I rolled my ankle in like three places. So that's why I didn't play towards the end of the season. So it was a completely separate injury. Mm. Um, so a lot of people think that I've been struggling with my Achilles, but I I haven't really. I've just had um a few rolls of the ankles and, and stuff like that and then um come back that pre-season expecting to like you know be a big part of Hibs you know obviously Sean Maloney got fired and um I couldn't really help him and I, I never really played um and then um Lee Johnson come in then and you know I just I just wasn't for him and that's okay like he was honest to me that's fine and he just advised me to, to go out and get some game time and you know, I stuck around for a little while. I think <laughs> scored a hat trick in the first game, so I was like, "He's going to like me." Yeah, and then <laughs> um, Kilmarnock come in, and I f- I f- when you speak to Derek McInnes on the phone, he's he's like a salesman, and um, you know, I just thought it probably be best for um, for me and and for Hibbs because I went on the last day of the window, mm-hmm. and um, Hibbs was struggling at the time, and basically the manager said to me like just need to free up your wages to be honest and bring someone else in just a new uh, a new fresh face and it got to the point where I knew I wasn't wanted anymore so I just had to you know take the plunge and go down to Kilmarnock What's that conversation like you know I, I, I think you appreciate the honesty from a manager and I say that there you kind of went it's fair enough that happens in, in football but you also said at the start of the episode there that you you, know, you love playing for the club yeah, no, it, it it was tough. Like 
like in all honesty, I didn't want to go. Like I wanted to to graft and and work work hard and and, and try and get back to a good bit of form and and, and play for Hibs. And you know, I, I feel like I would have been a big part of Hibs' season last season if if I was there and the manager had, had admitted that to me when I come back um, that I would have. Um, but I had to go for myself really because I don't think I was going to get the game time that I wanted. Um, and you know, I spoke to to Derek on the phone, and you know, just so, he just sold it to me to be honest, and uh, got sucked right into it. And, and you know, it, it was a great experience going down there. Um, it was very hard. Um, the pitch train on that every day wasn't ideal for me, but um, great group of boys, great coach and staff. Uh, it's a great club. What what would you say like is are the, the sort of biggest differences uh, uh, between playing for Kilmarnock and playing for Hibs? Um, obviously the facilities for a start. Um, you know, HTC is fantastic. Um, playing on playing on grass every day. Um, at Kilmarnock, you get you, you train on the pitch every single day, so that match day feels a little bit different. You know, like you're in the same spot every day in the changing room. You know, just little things like that. Mm-hmm. So that that was a lot different, and you know, obviously Hibs is a bigger club in terms of fan base and um stuff like that um and obviously i had to travel to kilmarnock every day so okay. they were they were early starts you know i was leaving my house at like 10 past 7 in the morning and getting getting home at half five or whatever it was um, so that was hard a lot of miles in the car i don't know if we've had this opportunity or if we've ever asked anyone before but how much of an advantage do you think the plastic pitch does that actually give teams like Kilmarnock, Livingston, Hamilton, etc., the teams that have that pitch? Um, I, I think it's well. I can only speak on behalf of playing at Kilmarnock, and you know, I remember a lot of times where we were playing teams at Rugby Park, and you know, I look at people and they just didn't want to be out there in terms of opposition. They just didn't enjoy it. It's a tight pitch. The AstroTurf's rock solid, um, and that's why Kilmarnock's home form is so good. You know, they train on it every day. They're, they're used to it and you do you do get used to, to playing on that surface um it's consistent i suppose whereas grass can be soft or hard you know what you're going to get with the the astro turf you know it's going to slide off you know it's, you know it's going to bounce and it's definitely a strength for kilmarnock they um they pick up a lot of points at home um nice and tight and I suppose like when you train on somewhere every day and you see where the goal is and stuff like that you just pick up really good habits do you think it's a mindset though for the way team like they're, they're coming in going oh fuck on this plastic pitch again or do you think it you know is that more the advantage or most of the advantage well it, it's not it's not nice to play on like it's, it's not nice to play on but i think mindset going into the game people are going oh jesus christ playing on rugby park today the pitch is horrendous they're, they're all six foot four you know they're gonna kick lumps out of us you know that kind of thing so we we did go into games thinking, oh, we we got their number today. Like they, they don't want to be here. Yeah, because we spoke about that on here. Usually after we go to Livingston and lose points, and we go, oh, it's because we've got all these good facilities, and we go through there. And I'm like, but I, I'm I'm a believer. It's because the, the the players are going in, going, oh, I fucking hate going here. Yeah, you know, and and that even if even if that's just a small thing, yeah, it's, it's this percentage that knocks you off your game and gives. And they're sitting like they're what you're saying, going. Did any fans yet? No, no, definitely, definitely. And like, like I said, at Kilmarnock, every time we play, look, I think our record last year, I think we beat everyone at home apart from Celtic and Rangers. So that's for a team that's fighting relegation is is massive, and that our home form really saved us that that year. And they beat them this season as well, didn't they? They beat yeah, Celtic yeah. and Rangers this season there as well. So. Yeah. Fine, didn't they? yeah. Um. How was Derek McInnes to, to work under? You kind of talk about his uh, sales technique to get you to sign. How was he as a, as a manager and a coach? Yeah, I, I enjoyed my time there. He he, he was good. Um, obviously, he's um, he's very experienced. Um, he knows how to to set a team up and to try and get um, the points. To obviously, last year our, our ambition was to, to stay in the division. Um, I think he had a lot of players from the the championship going into the Premiership and. Um, I feel like he's probably admitted himself that the new players he's come in have has pushed them to another level. Um, 
but yeah, he's good, disciplined, um, just knows how to to win in the Scottish Premiership. I'd say. From a player's perspective, so obviously Hibs have just had a, a managerial change, and you played under Derek McInnes at Kilmarnock. So Derek McInnes naturally, being a Scottish football manager, he was he was kind of touted amongst some Hibs fans as being, you know, a possible candidate for the the role. Um, do you ever, or do the players ever sit in the dressing room and have the same sort of conversations and go, oh, Derek McInnes might work here, or yeah, another manager might come in here, someone that I've worked under previously? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, I think as soon as the manager the manager leaves and, you know, you, this all kind of rumour is going around, but, um, oh, I got asked a million questions about Derek McInnes. <laughs> um even the Kilmarnock boys going, what's going on? <laughs> I'm like, I haven't heard anything. Uh, but I think he just gets touted for every job just because of his experience in, in, in the division. Um, but yeah, uh, the, it's obviously it's in the changing room. Everyone talks about, oh, who do you think is going to come in? Uh, what's he like? Blah, blah, blah. Um, but we we found out about um, the new manager coming in probably a minute before it came out online. We all got a text message. So, um, but yeah, that's it. What was the most outrageous rumour that you heard in the dressing room about who might become the new manager of Hibs? Um, outrageous. Any strange or weird and wonderful names? Oh, feels like a lifetime ago now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I never, no, not I can think of, to be honest. You, I I heard a lot to, to do with the Australian national coach, which I thought would have been quite weird for him to move from the national team to to Hibs. Um, Does nobody ever make any, anything up just to see if they get a bite or that? Like so that's, that's, that, that we just, would be all over that. Eh? We were like, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Well, that's probably sounds like something Boyley would do, or you know. Um, Alfie tried to make out that he knew just because he's been in Australia, and you know he's like. So as soon as the gaffer got announced. Uh, Alfie was like, "Oh, I knew about this two weeks ago." It's like, "Why, why didn't you bloody tell anyone then?" We've got a boy like that. WhatsApp the... group, eh? Yeah, and the new guy. Um, so when uh, Nick Montgomery was announced, did were you all sit on the phone to Lewis Miller to find out what he's like? Yeah, and Millsy's got it all wrong. <laughs> so like, we asked Millsy about training and you know days off or whatever, and he's like, "Yeah, blah blah blah." Got it completely wrong. Good. <laughs> I don't know whether he's just completely changed his approach for what he done in Central Coast, but um, Mills is like that. He, uh, I don't think he can remember being at Central Coast. To be honest, he's one of them kind of characters. Um, how, how's it been for for you this week with with the players that have been away on international duty? Actually, I was going to ask you about Dylan Levitt uh, coming in. So, because he's uh, Welsh. Did you help him settle? Was it easier for him having somebody else that spoke the language when he got to oh, I, <laughs> I wish I could say I spoke the language, to be honest. I don't Dill Dill can't either, to be honest. Um, but now nah, like as soon as he came in, um to be honest, we've got such a great group. Um everyone gets made feel re- really welcome and Dylan's a quiet lad, but he he's definitely come out of his shell the last the last few weeks. Um, you know, he's had a tough start to his Hibs career with just injuries and stuff like that. Um but what a player. Really good football player. Um he'll be a he'll be a big player for us this year. And I suppose the what benefit sort of sorry Joe, I was carrying on with this this one the, the benefit of having Dylan in the, the Welsh squad is they're probably somebody watching Hibs and that's a wee incentive for you as well. Yeah well definitely um I don't know whether I've just passed that um uh, thing but I suppose it's something that you can always um try and do and you know a little bit of um ambition of mine i suppose is always to, to represent my country don't think i'll uh, i'll ever retire but um it's it's also good yeah it's, it'll be good for me i know obviously coaches or or scouts will f- come up to to watch dylan and if i have a good game you never you know you never know just need to take up voodoo find who's in front of you the, the peck in order to get a wee doll yeah. <laughs> right that's yeah, right pick, pick them off that's- Sorry, John, I jumped in when you were going to ask a question. You can go ahead. Nah, sorry, it, it probably isn't that good a question. It's just when you were talking about like players settling in at Easter Road and sort of like connections, whether it's uh, nationality or previous clubs or whatever. Um, 
And it's really around what the initiation ceremonies are like at Easter Road. What do you have the new guys do when they come in? And also, is Martin Boyle in charge of it? Because him um, being like the Australian, was it vibe coach or vibe manager or something? Oh, I'm, uh, Martin, Martin's obviously, he's nuts. Absolutely nuts. Um, but what we've done this year is with the initiation, we've done it in Marbella when we were away. So um, I think we were at a restaurant and then there was a guy, um, the DJ, and we basically said to him, you don't mind if a few of the lads sing, but it's a fucked out <laughs> restaurant. Um, people like spending a lot of money on their food and drink. And I think it got to about four songs and the DJ was like, we can't do this anymore. People are going to start <laughs> watching it. Because obviously we're footballers, we ain't, we're not singers, you know, and yeah. I think it was the last night, so we, we were allowed to have a few drinks. So um, lads were getting a bit, you know, um, getting a bit drunk, and you know they got them on the mic, and we're all there like that. And you know, it's I as an initiation, I think that's the best way to do it is when you're out with the lads and you're having a few drinks and you feel relaxed. The worst is when it's a Friday before a hotel, uh, before Aberdeen away, and you're in a hotel and you've got to sit on a chair and you're completely sober. Yeah, no, I mean, probably the first, probably the first Welsh person I've heard to say the they're not a singer as well. Oh, I, think, no, uh, I know. <laughs> it's like, I, I've had that. So, I've had that so much from the lads up here as well. But to, to be honest, that's probably the the worst thing. I'm like, I'm terrible at singing. That's all right. You're not, you're not a singer, like you said. Um, right, just conscious of the time. We'll move on to some listener uh, questions. If I just before we do that, um. Just to bring us up to date on how things are this season, Christian, it seems to be going well for you. Uh, how, how are you finding it right right now? Um, no, good. Um, I think I probably played my best football the start of the season, I'd say. Um, just the way we were playing, we were going uh, a lot longer, and obviously, that that's good for me in terms of my strengths. Um, and since uh, the new managers come in, my probably my form's dipped a little bit. If I'm going to be honest, um, probably haven't been as good as I'd like. But you know, you, I tried to set quite high standards, um, so I'm just trying to to get back back on it. Um, obviously, we, we're playing a completely new style of football, so it's all about learning and adjusting. And you know, I'm sure it'll all work out. Um, big game on the weekend. Um, obviously, we've got a game plan to try and win. So looking forward to it. And have you been told to stay up at corners now? Is that like the? <laughs> is that... Uh, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> Too soon. I'm still not over it. It worked uh, out yeah. all right, didn't it? It worked out all right in the, in the end. Thank, the thank end, God. You know? I, I think I went. I went in after the game, and I was like, "Sorry, lads. Like, I've had an absolute nightmare there." I was like, "Thank you so much, Ellie." And I think I give him a kiss on the forehead, just be like, "Thank you so much." What's What's happened there? Have you? Because it was up the other up other end of the pitch from us have you kind of swung a leg at it trying to clear it or is it just kind of like ricocheted off you as it's gone in so it was like a, they done a quick corner didn't they and um everything happened quite quickly and as you're trying to squeeze out the box the balls come in and you know all you're thinking is right for, throw your right leg try and get good contact up the pitch just like simple stuff and for some reason, it's just gone flying off my shin. It was, it was really, uh, it was really wet, but it's no excuse really. And like you could do that a billion times, and it would never happen again. I just think, just severely unlucky, and obviously wrong technique. That's just the luck they so, have in that fixture. Eh? Like that's you, Christian. That, that's all the day with luck that they have. None to do with you. <laughs> and and there was something more embarrassing was the celebration. Eh, for, uh, like mm. celebrate like you scored the fucking. Yeah, uh, I, said, the I, just, look, I, just look, I remember looking at the big screen and one of the boys was laughing about me the other day because I think it was Jimmy Jago. He said we were talking about it and he was like, "Ah, oh, um, Doji, I just looked at you and you just looked at the screen and just put your head down and just went." <laughs> I'm so sorry for you. And like after the game, like um, Mrs has picked me up and she's like, "Are you right?" I'm like, "Nah." like gutted whatever she's like don't worry no one in the stand knew it was you i was like well wait till bloody <laughs> <social media> later. <laughs> like no, we had no clue what happened there eh? like we were, we were like no, saying, what would have been the celebration bit? Like, yeah. um, he, was, he was knee sliding in that eh? so everybody thought he scored that absolute and I think the, the, worst, the worst thing was is that i knew i was coming off before because i seen alfie warming up and um so it was the set play 
And then my number went up straight away. And I'm like, I can't even like try and score now to like. And I remember I, I sat on the the bench and I'm like gutted, like heads down a little bit. And Paul Anlin's talking to me about the game, and I'm just not responding to him. <laughs> Shut up, Paul. Not yeah, like, Paul. <laughs> Shut up, no, man. Like blah blah blah. <laughs> And then after the game, he was like, oh, I didn't know you scored the own goal. No thank me. <laughs> he was maybe telling you about the time that he equalised at Tiny. Uh, I yeah. tell you, it'll be all right. I've heard all, heard all about that one. And I've seen her a few, very few times. Right, let's uh, let's get some questions. The first one I've got is uh, from Sean Duff, and it's probably kind of tying into that question. He says, what, what was your biggest disappointment uh, while you've been at Hibs? And somebody did reply being on Long Bangers, but it's obviously this podcast, so ha 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 for that one. But uh, what's your uh, what's your, your your biggest disappointment so far? Um, oh, it's the Scottish Cup final, um, without a doubt. You know that was that was a tough one. Um, you know, just because we had such a great season, it just felt right, and you know we we didn't manage to do it, and uh, it was tough. Uh, okay, I, I think that's that's hopefully the only sort of major disappointment that you have. I, I kind of phrased that question, like, what's the biggest one so far? Like, there's more to come. There's, like, nah. there's no more to come. Nah, it's all, it's all so good times for you. Um, and, and so what, what's your, your happiest moment so far in uh, at Hibs? Um, God. I think, well, the most relieved I've ever been is when I scored that hat-trick against um, St. Johnson. I think when I scored the header, um, if you could bottle up that, feeling when I run off and celebrate there, it would be worth billions. Um, you know, I, I remember the a lot of the season when we, we come third was was great. Um, I think the goal against Dundee United to beat them 3-1, I think, in the semi-final to get to the final. Um, that was amazing. Even the Aberdeen, uh, after the game at Aberdeen when we secured third, um, just the change room after. I, you just can't beat winning a game of football and, and feeling after the game when the music's on like just messing about talking about the game um just trying to think of any other really good moments can you remember all of your hips goals or you got like a good recollection for it because i'm thinking about some of the goals you're describing there normally i've got a good memory and i cannot think i can remember the goal at aberdeen the, the, can't easily, think of the goal at Dundee united they're easy to forget that's why <laughs> <laughs> um yeah Dundee united i was actually offside in the Dundee united one Good. So glad there was no VAR. Um, obviously the Aberdeen one. Um, just trying to think of it. Anyway. What do you think of VAR, Christian? We done a whole thing on the weekend on on VAR after the Scotland game during the week. What what was a player sort of thoughts about it? You know, I, I don't love it to be honest. Um, it can be quite frustrating and slow, and you know, if you score, you're still thinking, "Oh, Jesus Christ, they they're checking this at VAR." And to be honest, I've probably scored a lot more goals that should have been disallowed for offside or a foul or something. So it's probably affected me a little bit in terms of goal return because I've always seemed to be, um, you know, that I've scored a few, few goals which have been offside in my career or I've committed a foul or, you know, just little things like that. And um, I'd probably rather play without the AR, to be honest. But I can understand why it's in place and what have you. Okay, uh, Jake Gapper on Twitter said, that, "Have you ever scored with your arse?" Um, that's pro. Uh, yeah, I have actually. Yeah, someone. Uh, I think when I was at Forest Green, someone shot and it came off my bum and went in. That's when I was really flying. <laughs> but you talk about not scoring uh, the, the the good goals. You've got an overhead kick to your name this season. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I they, forgot about like, that. Yeah, they, like, like, they don't come along every day, do they? Like, oh, they don't. They don't. I, I completely forgot about that one. Jeez. Uh, right, Brunswick Bell said vinegar or nippy sauce? Uh, vinegar. What's nippy sauce? I don't have a clue. <laughs> right. It must be chippy sauce. I think it means chippy sauce. Maybe. I, I thought it might be a Welsh thing, yeah, like that, and you would know mm. when I said it like that. Mm. So I just read it as it was. Um, Gaz on Safari said, out of 15, how much do you love the hips? Out of what? Out of 15. 15? Yeah, this is our, our scoring measure on this podcast. Is out, not out of 10, it's out of 15. We rate all the players out of 15 at the end of the season as well. So oh, we're not allowed half marks, so we can't go seven. You're not allowed half points, just, right, just okay. to make the rules. 
<laughs> uh, this seems entirely <laughs> normal for us, but for anyone else listening, it must think, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Have you just had Louis Stevenson on here, or have you had other lads? Uh, we've had the... Uh, I'm trying to remember who's Martin on. Uh, yeah, Martin's been uh, on. Uh, Joe Lewis, on. Yeah, Joe's been on. Um, Steve Keen. Uh, yeah, Steve Keen. Liam Fontaine was on. Yeah, he interviewed, yeah, he interviewed Sean Maloney as well. Yeah, Sean There's Maloney. Been a, with, quite a few bodies. Oh, that's good. I should remember all the players that we've had on. It's terrible. But, uh, and uh, uh, probably every single one of them's went like that at one point. What? Uh, uh, what what am I doing, what what doing here? <laughs> I was a bit stopped there. I was like, I didn't really know what was going on. Ah, so anyway, out of 15, how much do you love the Hibs? So, which go back to the question, if you were to put a figure on it. 15. Yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Um, custard cream or bourbon? Uh, that's from 150k on Hamlin Hill. Custard cream. Controversial. I would have gone, I'm not a big fan of the custard cream. I like a bourbon, but I, just remember, I think I'm in a minority with that. I haven't had them for a while, to be honest. That's something I used to have over my nan's house when I was growing up, but um, you'd have the custard cream and you'd rip off the biscuit and then just, yeah. Um, Stuart asked, would you beat Gareth Bale at around the golf? No, certainly not. I think he plays off like one or something, doesn't he? So it's had plenty of time to do it, though, isn't it? I suppose. Um, Ryan Lyle asked, "Who's the best golfer at Hibs?" Uh I know Ryan, so I've played a f- few games with Ryan. Um, best golfer at Hibs. Um, in terms of handicap, I'd say Josh Campbell, but if they were playing match play, I'd probably go for Joe. I was uh, uh, I was expecting um I forgot his name. That's terrible. Striker injured. Harry McCurdy. Harry McCurdy. That's brutal. Oh, no. I would say he might, he's, he's always emotional. going on about the golf, isn't he? He's way too emotional to Is he? Yeah, he, like he's a good golfer, but he's too emotional. He's he's mental that kid. He dresses <laughs> for the golf even when he's no player now. Oh, he's <laughs> the quirkiest kid I know. <laughs> Uh, Charlie Banks asked uh, you've played under five permanent managers and in two interims since you joined Hibs four years ago why do you think there's been so much upheaval um, just think like as a team we've been too inconsistent to be honest um, just thinking of all the managers that have come in we've we seem to have hit bad form and then really struggled to to get out of it um, I think um each one, the, probably the players have probably let them down a little bit. Um, you know, and, and when you're managing a big club like Hibs, you get obviously a lot of pressure from fan base and, and stuff like that. And, you know, they've um, obviously chopped and changed a lot. Um, I think probably Jack Ross was the longest serving out of the ones that you said there. And, you know, he I feel like he really got it right. Um but I think with the new appointment of this manager, um, I think he's really is in for the long haul, um, just the way he is. And I think if you look back at his career, he was at Sheffield United for so many years and then went to Central Coast. And so he's someone who likes to stick around, I think, and he's building a good platform to do that just with how he is around the place and what he's like with with everyone. See, um, as a, a player when obviously it's like you've got a team going through a bit of a sticky spell and you know like maybe we're only one or two games away for the right and being on the wall for a manager does that affect how you play like whether you know maybe not deliberately but do you get a sense of it as a team that you're going this just isn't working yeah and, and certainly under Jack Ross I remember I think it was Livingston and I think Paul Hanlon and um, Paul McGinn's got sent off I got sent off against Ross County for something ridiculous Um and I think it's just because we wanted to win so bad, just because we we love the manager, like we loved playing under the manager and his coaching staff. And you know, I think like you just probably put a little bit too much pressure on yourself to to go and do stuff. And you know, you you kind of you kind of feel it around the place when a manager's close to to leaving. And it's it's not it's not nice. It's not very no. it's not a comfortable position to be in, to be honest. Um, AK Rab asked, who would you want to have your back? Uh, from the squad in a sticky situation, and who's the one you always have to drag out of place for being a dafty? So, if, if you're in a fight, who would you want at your back, and then who you have to drag out of the pub? So, basically, someone's going to look after me on a night out. 
Yeah, or or you know, like a Rami on the pitch or whatever. Who 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 you wanting first there? Well, that he's recently retired, but Darren McGregor is the man. Like he is the hardest man I know. I think like the just the pure size of him, his power, and he's just huge, and he knows how to fight. So it would probably be Daz. But if I had to, if I had to pick someone in the team who's quite handy, um. Oh, I don't think we've got many hard men, to be honest. Don't bother uh, letting that bit out. We'll see those rules. Uh, yeah. We'll just, we'll just edit that bit and we'll see whether there's we'll those see those too, too uh, many. Yeah. Too many to count. <laughs> uh, but, like, in terms uh, of. Well, to be honest, I've seen Joe on the punch bag. He, he, he likes it. He can throw a left up, to be fair. Uh, Rocky looks handy. Is Rocky not handy? Yeah, Rock, uh, yeah Rocky. I suppose Rocky's a unit, isn't he? Um, mm. I believe, yeah, Rocky. Just purely for the size of him, yeah. I, uh, liability. <laughs> it would be Joe Neal probably, or um, oh, sorry, <laughs> F- Martin <laughs> Boyle. Martin Boyle, hundred percent, hundred percent. My my favourite McGregor moment for for being the hard guy was when we were playing uh, in Europe under Lennon. I think Lennon was in charge, yeah. and he smashed the boy. Uh, like in, in the, the, the Triple game, uh, Triple E's, I think he broke the guy's jaw, and we yeah. got a free kick for it. I mean, he absolutely done a number on the guy, and then we got a free kick, and just like that's magnificent, it really is. It was um, Jack Ross used to purposely put me against Darren McGregor in training every single day, and it would just be like he's obviously so much bigger than me, but it was just for me to like be better with my back to goal and stuff like that, and. The amount of times you'd be wrestling around on the bloody floor after, like not in a fighting way, but just like trying to get to the ball or whatever. And he was he was so hard to play against just because of his pure strength and his pace as well. People don't realize how quick he is. Mm. Um, Ryan asked, "What career would you be in if you weren't a handful or a nuisance?" Is that to do with being a cop back in the day? <laughs> no, no, I think it was just a. Uh... Like if 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 you weren't a footballer or the type of footballer that you are, would you? Oh, think you right, sorry, to... sorry. Yeah, my my fault. Um, do you know what? I'm actually looking at stuff to do now to like. Because obviously I'm getting on a little bit now in terms of football. So obviously I'm I'm looking at things to do all the time. And um, I turned pro at 22, so I've got like loads of work experience from before then. So you know I'm quite comfortable with the fact of football. I I know I'm gonna have to work and. Um, probably start something completely new. So um, I've been thinking about doing coaching and I, I like to stay in the game um, into some kind of area, maybe like um, agency or, or something like that. I want to, I definitely want to stay and work with like academy lads trying to get them into the first team. I think that's like going to be a real passion of mine going forward. See, that, see if you're exclusive. Can you record? I was just going to say, is that exclusive that you're not going to move back to law enforcement when your playing days come to an end? I, I hardly lasted when I was in there. Uh, <laughs> that was um, one of them where your dad says, when you leave school, stop going to the pub, find a career. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do? So I applied for everything, and that was the first thing that came back to me. Um, it, it was it was good, though. Like, I, I did enjoy it, but it was never going to be a long-term thing for me. It was just more of like finding a career and um, trying to stick to it. And basically, I was playing part-time football at the time, so um, I was still trying to pursue that. But it was good It was good to have something to fall back on. See, you mentioned there about maybe coaching in an academy. Did, I don't know if you played in an academy. I know you came to football later, so I don't know if you, you came through it. But if you were coaching in an academy, would you do you think it's more important to win games like what? What's the the sort of the ethos? Is it is it better to win or play a certain way and develop the players? What's the what would be the attitude? I don't know what hips stuff down there than the the boys. Well, that's, a, that's a tough question, isn't it? Because like you 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 want your kids to to have that like winning mentality of, of winning football games, but um, especially when you're younger, it's all about improving and you know and learning. Obviously. When a manager comes in as well at first team level, it's almost like you want your 18s to play the way your first team plays. So it's easier jump for them going forward. Um, and obviously, sometimes if you're doing that, you might not win games of football uh, just because 
defenders might be making mistakes on the ball and and stuff like that. But um, it's potentially more about the individual as well, isn't it? Yeah. At younger ages than it is the team, is it? Or am I wrong there? Because it's um, yeah, I, I think obviously it's so important to win games, and I think people will be, like kids will be frustrated if they lose, um, regardless. But a lot of the time, it's, it's on the individual, and you know, um, it's, it's how you look at it. I think um, I know for a fact, like when I was a kid, I hated losing, so I I, I just presume most kids are like that. Um, Billy said uh, you've shown great character by overcoming COVID, your Achilles injury, and you're now one of our top performers this season. How did you find those months when you were out, uh, which we've covered already? But how did you overcome not only a physical injury, but also the mental side of things? Uh, P.S. You're his twin's favourite player. Oh, amazing. Um, do you know what? Just a good support system, really. Like um, mum and dad, brother, um, girlfriend. Better throw that one in there. Um, and then... Is she listening? No, nah, she's upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> And, and like good teammates as well. Like I'm, I'm close with a lot of the Hibs boys, and like going to probably be friends with them forever. And you know, and a lot of the, a lot of what people say to me is just remember where you come from. Obviously, I didn't have the, the, the I like the normal journey to being where I am now. So I've um, realized like how far you've come and how hard you've worked to get where you are. I think that's something that I kind of go back to every time I'm struggling a little bit is like try not to be too hard on yourself and realise that you've you've come a long way. Um you didn't see yourself in this position. Um so just gotta keep keep doing it and remembering what you've done to get to this position that you're in at the moment. Nice one. Um Paul Mackay said your favourite goal and your worst goal for us. Um favourite goal was probably um Probably the um, Aberdeen goal to get third, um, or the third goal at St Johnston. That was my first professional hat trick, so that was a a real nice nice moment for me. Um, and the Hearts, I scored against Hearts at Hamden, um, and that was my hundredth professional goal. So that was like a big achievement. I know we we like had a we lost and stuff, but I remember I, I hadn't scored for a while before that game, and I was thinking, oh, it's because I'm putting pressure on myself because it's my hundredth goal and stuff." Um, but that was nice to get that 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 one. And the well, the worst one, Jesus. Um, there's been a few. Um, I don't know. Can you remember any bad ones? Take any goal, eh? No, I wouldn't worry about that. Goal, you know, that's <laughs> it. If it goes in, we'll take it. Yeah. Uh, right, Jack Taylor says, do you think that your spell as a semi-pro has, has helped give you perspective on your career since and uh, bolstered your resilience as, as you always come across as a very level-headed kind of guy? Yeah, no, it's definitely it's definitely helped me. Um, you know, well, when, when things are tough, I remember like playing for my local team in the reserve like I couldn't even get in my local team first team at one point in my career and I was playing like centre half. Um and I remember doing the nets um before the game and one of the dads would be doing the line, you know, that kind of thing. Sausage and chips after the game with a pint, you know, just like the playing your subs. So that that that's not too long ago. So I always go back to like those moments and just think, Jesus, like I like remember where you've come from and you know, to be where I am now, I'm, I'm like just so happy that I managed to do it. Uh, Neil Renton asked, uh, with Christian being Irvin Welsh, what's your favourite character from Trainspotting? Um, God, you put me on the spot here. <laughs> um, who, who's the main guy again? Renton. Renton. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched it. I haven't watched that in years. Uh, Calvin Brown said, what was the biggest lesson you learned during your time at Kilmarnock? Um, um, not too sure, actually. Um, 
I think it was just like when when things are like really tough um, in terms of if you're not playing too well or the team is not doing well, um, it's all about just working as hard as you possibly can. Um, I think you can, if you're having a bad game and you give the ball away, but you work as hard as you possibly can, it makes up for it a little bit and um, you still get picked the next week. <laughs> we've, got, um, we've only got a couple left, so I'll, I'll try to rattle through them quite quickly. I just don't want to take up your, your full evening, uh, Christian. Right? And I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this place, so John, call and brace yourselves okay. for this. Right? And I apologise in advance. Right? So Stuart Anderson says, ask him if he prefers Scottish chippies or the one in Hanaravan. We're close. Two L's at the start, so it'll be Juan like that. Juan, Juan is it? Juan, Juan Ravan. Yeah, that's it. There you go. Who's asked this and how do they know about Lala Ravan? Should be. Uh, I don't know. Stuart, Ad- Stuart Anderson asked. I don't know how he knows about the chippies. Oh, well, that's just where I'm from. Um, spent many, many um, times there. Um, God, I can't even remember what the question was. I, I, I'd have to go with Lala Ravan. Chip. <laughs> go for that one. Right. Um, Favourite golf course and uh, what irons do you play with? That's from Dave Graham. Um, I've got Melka Helberg's old P790s, tailor-made. And favourite golf course is either Dunbarney um, or around Edinburgh. I really like Dunbar, which Mm -hmm. is um, probably like, I'd say one of the most underrated golf courses, I'd say, around um, Jack asks, what's your favourite album? Oh, album. Um, got it on my phone, actually. I was listening to it. The Stereophonics one. Um, what's it called? What the... I've just got best of Stereophonics on my phone. <laughs> best, best of Stereophonics. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. Take it. Um... Haley asked, hat trick or last minute winner? Um, what if it was a hat trick with a last minute, like your hat trick was the last minute winner? Shut up, George. Just, just take the question as it is, right? Hat trick or the last minute winner? I'd say, I think, I've, well, hat trick. Just because it's good for the goal tally, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Start padding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sean says, what's your thoughts on the Ting Tings? Uh, Sean says, don't think much of them. I don't know, are you a Ting Tings fan? I don't know what that question's about. No idea. What's the Ting Tings? Yeah, I don't know if they're still... I'll have a word with Sean after. I'll find out what that's all about. (laughs) Um, Right, we'll make this the last one. Paddy said, uh, his big pal Mason says hi and is asking if he can get another selfie against Celtic. Of course he can. Of course he can. Nice one. Okay, Christian, well, thank you so much for taking time out. Thank you, everybody, for sending in uh, questions and for listening to the episodes. Um, score prediction for Saturday, Christian? How do you think it's going to go? Um, 2 1 win. Good stuff. 2 1 win. Colin, same question to you. Who are you playing? <laughs> <laughs> That's Rangers, isn't it? Hey, I, I'm, I'm going to go 1 uh, 0, clean sheet. Yeah, no, for, for us. You all going to the game? Yes, I'm, 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 I'm not going. No, the time not to go to Ibrox. To, uh, to be fair, yeah, I think that even for our like friends and family, that like, that's one that they kind of they miss out on. Uh, mm. What what minute do you think they're going to get their penalty? <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll get the penalty. Probably be in the first uh, part. We're getting one this time. Do you uh, want? Uh, John, if you're going through, what's the what's your score prediction? Uh, two 0 Dodge with both. Good stuff, right? <laughs> Heard it here first. Right, Thank thanks, you. thanks everybody for uh, for tuning in, Christian. Thanks again, and uh, we will see you next time.